Hi there. Welcome back to Element 14 Presents. Matthew here, you there. And I know it's been a while, but let me show you what I've been working on. So what I have here is a lovely piece of vintage audio equipment. This is a Caliphone portable phonograph, or at least the bits of one. The only real problem is that it is monoaural, and I kind of wanted something that would play back in stereo. So I figure I know a thing or two about electronics, I just really need to rebuild the amplifier, right? How hard could that be? In case you're unfamiliar with how a phonograph actually works, let me explain something real quick. On a typical uh, stereo receiver, you will have one of two types of inputs, an input labeled phono or an input labeled line. In the case of a vinyl record, we all know that the record has all these little grooves in it and that little needle on there bounces up and down with the groove and that's how the sound is made. Now, more specifically, that needle is connected to a magnet or a pair of magnets in the case of a stereo turntable. Those magnets then bounce back and forth past a pair of coiled wires, one for each channel, and that generates a small voltage that then travels down the tone arm and out to an amplifier at what is known as phono level, which is about five millivolts. So from phono level input, we need to amplify that signal roughly 200 times up to what is known as line level input. Now, we could talk about RIAA equalization standards and how we actually have to attenuate the bass a little bit while we amplify the treble a little bit more, but that's way beyond the scope of this video, plus the fact that we're gonna handle that in the tone control circuit a little bit later. But we can debate that in the community at element14.com. There is a link in the doobly-doo. Now, why not just build a bigger amplifier, you might ask? Well, for one, this is supposed to be a portable unit, so it would be impractical as well as inefficient to try to cram one inside that case. And for two, just listen. You see, this entire time, I've had Wendy Carlos's well-tempered synthesizer playing at full volume on a 60-watt amplifier, which under normal circumstances is enough to fill this entire shop and the surrounding complex with ear-splitting levels of sound. Don't ask me how I know that. And that's why the preamp is such an imperative part of the device. So let's go ahead and look at that circuit. Now, this is going to be the heart of our preamplifier circuit. This is the NE5532P integrated circuit from Texas Instruments. I picked this one up from the Element 14 community. And this is the basic circuit that we're looking at for our preamplifier. Now, these values for resistors and capacitors will likely change depending on our needs for gain and filtering. But for the moment, let's just look at this first amplification stage and get that ready to go. So here you have the NE5532 amplifier chip. Uh, here are a pair of resistors that set the gain. Uh, I have them set for the same resistance uh, just because it makes the math so much easier. But you have one resistor uh, hooked to the input pin of the amplifier. You have another resistor that loops the output back to the input pin of the amplifier. Uh, you have uh, another input pin on the amplifier uh, tied to ground. Uh, this is the output signal. And then you have a 12 volt power supply coming into the amplifier. So let's see what this looks like, which through the magic of television, I happen to have breadboarded. Now you'll notice I stuck the IC over here on this piece of protoboard because they have a tendency to get a little warm and I didn't want to melt my breadboard again. So let's take this downstairs, hook it up to a 12 volt power supply and see what we get. Okay, so we've got everything hooked up. I've got a couple of uh, gain control resistors. Here's our signal input coming from there. Here is our signal output going to the uh, amplifier. And then we have our IC all hooked up. Got power on there. Now let's just see if it works. All right, here we go. Contact. I'm not getting anything. Volume. Nothing. 
All right, let me figure out what's going on. Happy learning. Wait, wow, wow, wow. Sometimes you just forget the basics. So I went back and I watched the learning circuit episode on op amps and <laughs> silly me, <laughs> it's a comparator. It requires a positive and a negative voltage in order to do what it does. So I whipped up this power supply. Now this is a pretty rock basic, simple rectification circuit. We're going to start with our 12 volt AC source. Half of that is going to be connected to ground. The other leg is going to be split into two nearly identical rectification circuits. Uh, on this side, we'll use a rectifying diode to limit the polarity in one direction through an RC circuit to ground with a negative voltage out. On this side, we will reverse the polarity of the rectifying diode and the polarized capacitor. Uh, also connected to ground, and that will give us the positive voltage out. We'll connect both of those to the op amp, and then we should be in business. Now, let's go ahead and look at this on the breadboard. We have a 120 to 12 volt AC AC transformer running into a simple rectification circuit. Now, I will put links to all this stuff on the Element 14 community so you can see it there. But basically, we're getting about 19 volts off of this positive 19, negative 19 DC volts, which is well within the operating range of our IC. So um, let's uh, go ahead and take this down there and we'll see if it works. Okay, here we go. We've got it set up. We've got our 12 volts in rectified. I've got everything running into the IC directly. Uh, no, uh, no resistance on this circuit. We're going full gain just to see what it'll do. I don't want to take any chances here. All that's connected the way it should be. Okay, let's give it a shot. All right, power on here. Tone arm up. Engaged. Okay, it's playing. Yes! <laughs> All right, fantastic. Okay, okay, okay. It sounds like crap. It sounds like absolute trash because it's way overmodulated, way overdriven. Uh, but I can clean that up. That's not a problem. That's just voltage dividers. That's okay. Um, oh my God, yes, it works. Oh, it finally works. So the question is really, how hard is it to build a solid state preamplifier from scratch? Now, admit it, we have all done silly mistakes like this where you have a simple oversight and it causes the whole project to blow up in your face. Hopefully not literally. Hold onto your butts. Oh, that blew up. So it just goes to show that as long as you're paying attention to what you're doing and you take the time to read your data sheets very carefully, it's really not that difficult to build something like a simple preamp. Now, I am going to get back to this project and I will see you in a future video once it's completed. In the meantime, if you'd like to keep up with the progress I'm making, you can do that on the Element 14 community at community.element14.com. Just search for Project Caliphone. But until then, my name is Matthew, and remember, it's okay, it's just a prototype. Rally ho, y'all.